Welcome back to our studios in Palo Alto, California. My name is Dave Vellante. I'm here with John Furrier, who was taking a quick break. You know, and one of the early examples that we used of so-called super cloud was, was Snowflake. We called it a super data cloud. We had really a lot of fun with that. And uh, we've started to evolve our thinking. Years ago, we said that data was going to form in the cloud around industries and ecosystems. And Benoit Dajaville is a many time guest of theCUBE. He's the co-founder and president of products at Snowflake. Benoit, thanks for spending some time with us yeah. at SuperCloud 22, good to see you. Thank you, thank you, Dave. So, you know, we, like I said, we've had some fun with this, with this meme, but, but it really is, we heard on the previous panel, everybody's using Snowflake as an example, somebody who builds on top of hyperscale infrastructure. Uh, you're not building your own data centers. Uh, and so, do, have you, are you building a super data cloud? We, we don't call it exactly that way. Um, we don't like the super, you know, word. It's a little bit dismissive that's about, our that's our term. Ab about <laughs> our, you know, friends at uh, cloud <laughs> provider friends. Uh, so, but, but we, we call it the data cloud. And, mm -hmm. and the vision really for the data cloud is indeed, it's a cloud which overlays, you know, the, the hyperscaler, you know, cloud. And, and, but there is a big difference, right? There are several ways to do this, you know, uh, super cloud as, as you name them. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, w the way we, 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 we picked is, is to create, you know, one single system, and that's very important, right? The, 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 um, um, the, the, there, there are several ways, right? You can instantiate, you know, your solution uh, in every region of the cloud, and, and, you know, potentially that region could be AWS, that region could be GCP, so you are indeed a multi-cloud solution. But Snowflake, we did it differently. We are really, creating cloud regions which are superposed on top of the cloud provider you know region infrastructure region so we are building our regions but but why, where where it's very different is that each region of snowflake is not one in instantiation of our service our service is global by nature we can move data from one region to the other when you land in snowflake you land into one region but but you can grow from there and you can you know exist in multiple cloud at the same time and that's very important right it's not one single i mean different instantiation of a system is one single instantiation which covers many cloud regions and many cloud provider so we use snowflake, snowflake as an example and we're trying to understand what the salient aspects are of you know your data cloud what we call super cloud in fact you know you, you use the word instantiate kit colbert just earlier today laid out he said there's sort of three levels you can run it on one cloud and communicate with the other cloud you can instantiate on the clouds or you can have the same service running 24 seven across clouds. That's the hardest example, yeah. the most mature. You just described essentially doing that. How do you enable that? What are the technical enablers? Yeah, so, so, so as I said, you know, first we start by building, you know, Snowflake regions. We have today 30 region that spawn, you know, the world. So it's a worldwide, worldwide uh, system uh, uh, with many regions, but all these regions are connected together. They are, you know, meshed together with our technology. We name it Snow Grid, and that makes it hard because, you know, regions, you know, Azure region can talk to AWS region or GCP regions, and, and as a as a user of our cloud, you, you don't see really these regional differences that you know, regions are in different, you know, potentially cloud. When, when you use Snowflake, you can exist, your, you, your presence as an organization can be in several uh, regions, several clouds if you want, geographic and, 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 and both geographic and cloud provider. So I can share data uh, yes. irrespective of the, the cloud and I'm in the Snowflake data cloud, is that correct? I can do that today. Exactly, that and, and that's very critical, right? What, what we wanted is to un, uh, remove data silos. And, and when you instantiate a system in one single region and that system is locked in that region, you cannot communicate with other parts of, of the world, you are locking the data in one region. Right, and we didn't want to do that. We wanted, you know, data to be distributed the way customer wants it to be distributed across the world, and potentially sharing data at world scale. So, so does that yeah. mean if I'm in one region and I want to run a query that's, if I'm in AWS in one region, I want to run a query when data that happens to be in an Azure cloud, I can actually execute so, that? 
So, so yes and no. The, the, the way we do it is very expensive to do that because generally if you want to join, you know, data which, is in, which are in different region and different cloud, mm -hmm. it's going to be very expensive because you need to move, you know, data every time you join it. So the way we do it is that you replicate the subset of data that you want to access from one region from other regions. So you can create this data mesh, but data is replicated to make it very cheap and very performant too. And, and is the snow grid, does that have the metadata intelligence yes. to actually yes. perform? Can you describe that a little bit? Yeah, snow grid is both a, a, a way to, to exchange, you know, metadata about, so each region of Snowflake knows about all the other regions of Snowflake. Every time we create a new region, that, re, you know, the metadata is distributed over our data cloud not only you know region knows all the region but knows you know every organization that exists in our cloud where this organization is where data can be replicated by this organization and then of course it's it's also used as a way to uh, 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 exchange data right so you can exchange you know petabyte scale of, of data size and we just had uh, I was just receiving an email from one of our customers who moved more than four petabytes of data cross region, cross, you know, cloud providers in, you know, few days. And, you know, it's a lot of data, so it takes, you know, some time to move, but they were able to do that online, completely online and, and switch over, you know, to the, diff to, to the other region, which is failover is very important also. So one of the hardest parts about SuperCloud that I'm still trying to struggling through is the security model, um, because you've got the cloud as your sort of first line of defense, and now we've got multiple clouds with multiple first lines of defense. I've got a shared responsibility model across those clouds. I've got different tools in each of those clouds. Do you take care of that? Uh, where do you pick up from the cloud providers? Do you abstract that security layer? Do you, you know, bring in partners? It's a very complicated- No, th this, is a, a, like, this is a great question. Uh, security has always been the most important aspect of Snowflake since day one, right? This is the question that every customer of ours has, you know, how you, can you guarantee the security of my data? And so we secure data really tightly in, in region. We have several layers of security. It starts by, by encrypting it, a, every data at rest. And that's very important. A lot of customers are not doing that, right? You hear these attacks, for example, on, on, on cloud, you know, where someone left, you know, their buckets uh, uh, open yeah. and then, you know, you can access the data because it's a non-encrypted. Uh, uh, so we are encrypting everything at rest. We are encrypting everything in transit. So a region is very secure. Now, you know, you'd never, from one region, you never access data from another region in Snowflake. That's why also we replicate data. Now the replication of that data across region or the metadata, uh, for that matter, is, is really highly secure. So SnowGrid ensures that everything is encrypted, everything is, you know, we have multiple, you know, uh, encryption keys and it's, you know, stored in hardware, you know, secure modules. So we, 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 we built, you know, SnowGrid such that it, it's secure and it allows very secure movement of data. Okay, so I, I know we kind of, getting into the technology here yes. a lot today, but because SuperCloud is the future, we actually have to have an architectural foundation on which to build. So, so you mentioned like a bucket, like an S3 bucket, okay, that's storage, but you also, for instance, taking advantage of new semiconductor technology. Yes. So my, my quite, like, like Graviton as an example, that drives efficiency, you guys talk about how you pass that on to your customers, even if it means less revenue for you. So uh, awesome, we love, we love that. You make it up in volume. And so, um, exactly. and so, but so how do you deal with the lowest common denominator problem? I was, I was talking to somebody the other day and, and this individual brought up what I thought was a really good point. What if we, let's say AWS, have the best, you know, silicon, okay? Yes. And we can run the fastest and the, and the, the least expensive and the lowest power. Uh, but another cloud provider hasn't caught up yet. How do you deal with that delta? Do you just take the best of and try to no, extract it's, that? No, it's a, it's a great question. I mean, of course our software is abstracting, mm -hmm. you know, all the cloud providers, you know, infrastructure such so that when you run in one region, let's say AWS or Azure, it doesn't make any difference as far as, far as the applications are concerned. And, and this, Abstraction, of course, is a lot of work. I mean, really, really a lot of work because it needs to be secure, it needs to be performance, and you know, every cloud, and it has you know, to expose APIs which are uniform, and, and you know, cloud providers, even though they have potentially the same concept, let's say blob storage, 
APIs are completely different. The way you know these systems are secure is completely different. The errors that you can get and and the retry you know mechanism is very different from one cloud to the other. The performance is also different. We discovered that when we were starting to port our software, and 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 you know we had to completely rethink how to leverage blob storage in that cloud versus that cloud because just of performance too. Uh, so we had you know for example to you know Stripe data. So all this work is work that you know you don't need as an application because our vision really is that application which are running in our data cloud can you know be abstracted of all these difference and and we provide all the services all the workload that this application need whether it's, it's transactional access to data analytical access to data you know managing you know logs managing you know metrics all of these is, is abstracted too such that they are not you know tied to one you know particular service of one cloud and and distributing this application across you know many region many cloud is is very seamless so snowflake has built your team has built that true abstraction layer across yes. those clouds that's available today it's actually shipping yes I can use and, it and we are still and developing it you know the transactional you know uh, um, Unisto as, as we yes, call right. it was announced in last summit so so they are still you know work in progress You're not done yet. but but <laughs> but that's the vision right and 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 that, that's important because we talk about the infrastructure right you, you mentioned a lot about storage and compute but it's not only that right when you think about application they need to use the transactional database they need to use an analytical system they need to use you know machine learning so you need to provide also all these services which are consistent across all the cloud providers so let's talk developers because you know you think snowpark you guys announced a big application development push uh, yeah. at the snowflake uh, summit recently and we have said that a criterion of super cloud is a super pass layer people love they wince when i say that but okay we're just going to go with it and uh, but but the point is it's a purpose built application development layer specific to your particular agenda yes th that supports your vision is, have you essentially built a a, a purpose built PaaS layer, or do you just take kind of off the shelf standard PaaS and cobble it together? No, we, we build it, you know, a, a custom build because, because as you said, you know, what exists in one cloud might not exist in another cloud provider, right? So, so we have to build, you know, this, all these, these components that an app, modern application, modern data application need. And, 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 and that, you know, goes to machine learning, as I said, transactional uh, analytical system. Uh, um, and the entire thing, so, so that they can run in isolation, basically. And the objective is the developer experience will be identical across those clouds, is yes, that right? Yes, the developers doesn't need to worry about cloud provider, and actually our system, we, we have, we, we didn't talk about it, but the marketplace that, that we have, which allows actually to deliver. We're getting there. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to no, no, let's go, let's go there, because the other, um, aspect of SuperCloud that we've talked about is the ecosystem. You have to yes. enable an ecosystem to add incremental value. It's not, you know, the power of many versus the capabilities of one. So, so talk about the the challenges of doing that. Not just the business challenges, but again, I'm interested in the technical and architectural challenges. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so it's really about. I mean, Snowflake has the, the way we enable our, you know, ecosystem mm -hmm. and, and, you know, our partners, you know, to, to, to create value on top of our data cloud is, is via the marketplace uh, where, where you can, you know, put, you know, share data in the marketplace, put, you know, g g provide listing on this marketplace, which are data sets. Uh, but it goes way beyond data. It, it's all go all the way to applications. So you can develop, think of it as the iPhone, a little bit more, all right? Your iPhone is great, not so much because the hardware is great, or because you know of the iOS, but because of all the applications that you have, and all these applications are not necessarily developed by the you know uh, uh, Apple basically. So so we are you know it's the same model with our marketplace. We we foresee an environment where you know cost, I mean providers and partners are going to build these applications. We call it native application, and we are going to help them distributed these applications cross cloud, you know, everywhere in the world potentially. And they don't need to worry about that. They don't need to worry about how these applications are going to be instantiated, how we are going to help them to monetize these applications. So that unlocks, you know, really all the partner ecosystem that you have seen, you know, with, with something like the iPhone, right? It has created, you know, so many new companies that have developed, you know, th these applications. Um, 
Your detractors have criticized you for being a walled garden. I've actually used that term. I, I use terms like de facto standard, which are maybe you know, less, less sensitive to you. But nonetheless, you know, we've seen de facto standards actually deliver value. I've talked to Frank Slootman about this, and he said, Dave, we deliver value. That's what we're all about. At the same time, you know, he, he even said to me, and what are your thoughts on this is, look, we have to embrace open source where it makes sense. You guys announced the pasture iceberg. So, so what are your thoughts on that? Is that to enable a developer ecosystem? Why? Why did you do Iceberg? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, oh, uh, Iceberg is, is very important. So ju just to, to give some context, Iceberg is an open, you know, table format, right. which was, you know, first, you know, developed by Netflix and Netflix, you know, put it uh, open source in the Apache uh, uh, community. So we embrace that, that open source standard because because it's widely used by, by many, uh, um, uh, many you know, companies. And also many companies have you know, really invested a lot of, of uh, uh, effort in building you know, big data, Hadoop solution or data lake solution. And they want to use Snowflake. And they couldn't really use Snowflake because all their data were in open you know, format. So we are embracing Iceberg to help these companies move to the cloud. But, why we have been reluctant uh, um, uh, with direct access to data. Direct access to data is a little bit of a problem for us. And, and the reason is when you direct access to data, now you have direct access to storage. Now you have to understand, for example, the specificity of one cloud versus the other. So as soon as you start to have direct access to data, you lose your, you know, your cloud diagnostic layer. You don't access data with API. When you have direct access to data, it's very hard to secure data because you need to grant access, direct access to tools which are not, you know, protected. And you see a lot of, you know, uh, uh, hacking of, of data, you know, because of that. So, so that was not, you know, direct access to data is not serving well our customers, and that's why we have been reluctant to do that because it 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 is not cloud diagnostic. It's it's you, you have to code that. You have to you, you you need a lot of intelligence while APIs access. So we want open APIs. That that's that's I guess, I guess the, the way we embrace mm -hmm. you know openness is is by open API versus you know you access directly data. Um, iPhone. Um, I, I, yeah, yeah, I, I, iPhone I mean, APIs, it's, it's, you know, we, we, we define a set of APIs because APIs, you know, the implementation of the APIs can change, can improve, uh, you can improve compression of data. For example, if you open direct access to data now, you know, you cannot evolve. My point is you've made a promise for, you know, govern security, yeah. data sharing, ecosystem, it works the same way. So it does, that's, that's, that's the, the path that you've chosen. Benoit Dajaville, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE and participating in SuperCloud 22. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you, Dave. It was a great pleasure. All right, keep it right there. Right, right back with our next segment, right after this short break. <laughs>